to this week's video. Sorry it's been a while. This kind of took a process. You'll notice in the video I'm wearing three different outfits because that's how long it took me to finish this. So, it is kind of a lengthy one, but it'll take you through the process of drafting your bodice pattern. I will upload documents and step-by-step -step instructions to our Google Drive and link those below so that you have access to those. For this project, you're going to need grid paper or fabric. I use the Pellon interfacing type grid fabric that has the one inch squares. You'll need a pencil, a straight clear ruler, a curved ruler, like a French curve ruler or some other curved ruler, as well as the measurement chart for the measurements that we took already. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a rectangle. And this rectangle is going to encompass both your draft for your back and your front bodice. Now a draft is only half of the actual piece of fabric, so you'll always cut it on a fold. But we're gonna start with a rectangle and we're going to letter all of our lines. So this rectangle is going to be A, B, C, and D. We're gonna start with line A, B, which is going to be your code number one, your bodice back center back measurement. Now don't draw directly on the edge of your material or your paper. Make sure that you go down a little bit and that we're hanging out somewhere in the middle of this area. Now I like to use just a regular number two pencil. I find that mechanical pencils can sometimes be just a little bit too uh, thin, especially when you're using fabric. They tend to make holes and tears. Okay, so this is line A, B, and let's go ahead and mark that line A, B. The next line we're going to do is going to be B, C, and B, C is going to be half of your bust measurement. So that's going to be half of code number 25. and mark that line as well. And then line C, D, and A, D are going to be the exact same length as the lines you just drew. So go ahead and mark those lines. Label D right there. Now, you're going to extend line C, D is going to be a little bit longer than A, B. So I'm just gonna extend mine down a couple of inches so that it's just a little bit longer. So now we've got a rectangle that is roughly half of your width. Next, we're going to mark line E, F, which you're going to use the measurement of your back width center back to arm guys. So that's code number 14. You're going to use that measurement and you're going to measure from line A, B using your code number 14 measurement. So you just have to make a mark measure anywhere for line A, B because then you're just going to draw a straight line between line B, C and A, D. If you want to mark a couple different spots on that line, that's probably a good idea. Make sure you're getting a straight line. So this line is going to be E, F. And this one, we're also going to extend below B, C. So it's going to be a little bit longer. Take that down just a couple of inches. Next, we're going to make our line G, A. So what you're going to do is you're going to measure up from your line using the bodice side seam measurement. So that is measurement number three, your bodice side seam measurement. So we're gonna measure from line BC using code number three to make line GH. And then go ahead and draw that line. So that is line GH. We're going to put H here between A and B and G over here between C and D. So now you have a rectangle that has been divided into four quadrants. Now we're actually going to take line GH and we're actually going to measure down a quarter of an inch and that's going to be line GH. So your GH measurement is going to be your bodice side seam measurement code three minus a quarter of an inch. Now if you don't use inches and you're on the metric system, I was going to try and do conversions for you, but I apparently don't really understand how centimeters work. So I apologize and hopefully you can either find a conversion online or you're smarter than me because even with the conversions online I was still confused. Now 
math is not my strong point. So line GH is your bodice side seam minus a quarter of an inch. Next we're gonna mark our waist dark placement. So let's mark really fast. Line AB is your center back, and line CD is your center front. I made a huge mistake when I had you measuring. Now, I taught you a few wrong measurements for this bodice. So at this point, if you have not already watched my live video retaking those measurements, be sure to go watch it. I'll link it above so that you can click on it right now and get that out of the way to make sure that we have these measurements correct so that you can make sure your bodice is going to fit you. So we're gonna start with the back dart placement. So that's gonna be measurement number 15. So you're gonna measure from point B over using code 15. Now we're gonna measure an inch and a half from that point, which is point I, and an inch and a half over is gonna be point J. So next we're gonna mark the center of those two points, which should be about three quarters of an inch. And we're gonna measure up parallel to line BA and draw with a dotted line. And you're gonna stop there at line HG and that point is going to be point K. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take and you're gonna draw from point K and you're gonna connect that to point I and extend that down about a quarter to half an inch below line B, C. You're gonna do the same thing from point K to point J to create that back dart. So that is your back dart placement. So now we're going to find the side seam point for our back bodice, which is going to be using measurement 16, which is your back waistline, center back to side seam. So your center back right here is AB. So we're gonna measure from AB over from the bottom. So down on line BC, we're gonna measure using code measurement 16. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go from point M. So M is gonna be this point right here where the four quadrants meet. You're gonna measure from point M and draw a straight line from point M down here to point L, which is where we just measured our side seam. And again, you're gonna extend that slightly below line BC. So now we're going to mark our waistline. So, we need to make sure that we know exactly where a quarter inch is on these marks that we made. So we only want point I, point J, and point L to be drawn a quarter inch below line BC. So make sure those are marked just barely a quarter inch below, because that's where we're gonna mark our waist. Now, to draw the waist, you're going to need to use a curved ruler. My curved ruler is broken, and I tried to glue it back together. I had some epoxy I was gonna to use to put it back together, and it got lost in the move, and I don't know where it is. So, here's my curved ruler in two pieces. We're just gonna find just a slight curve, so I'm gonna use this edge right here. Uh, the best thing to do is to get probably a French curve ruler, if you can find one of those. And we're just going to mark from point B to point I using that slight curve. And then we're going to go J to L, also using a curve. And your curve should... See, that's not a very good curve. I'm going to use a different curve. Because you want your curve to hit up onto that line between B and C. So I'm going to give it more of a curve here like this. There we go. And you just kind of have to play with it till you find a curve that will match your points. So that is our back waistline. Next, we're going to do our neck curve. Now remember, we took new measurements for this because again, I apologize, it's been a long time since I have done these and I measured wrong. So you are using two measurements for your depth and your width. So we're going to mark those just as if we were making them Okay, and then you're gonna use your curve. So remember, from point A, it has to be, point A has to be a right angle. So you're just gonna move your ruler until you can get a right angle for at least a half to a quarter inch to a half inch from point A, and then mark it and curve it up, and that's gonna be your neck curve. We're gonna label this point as point F. Next, we're gonna draw our shoulder seam. Now your shoulder seam is gonna be measurement number nine, you're gonna use also measurement number two. Now you're gonna take one ruler from 
B, and you're going to measure your measurement 2 at a diagonal. Measurement number 9, which is your shoulder seam, you have to add a half inch to allow for darts in the shoulder. So you're going to take that measurement and you're going to match up your two rulers because you want them to intersect at a right angle. So you're just going to have to angle and kind of move them around until they meet at a right angle. And then you're going to draw that line is going to be line O M. Next we're going to draft that bodice back shoulder dart. So what you're going to do is you're going to find the center of line N O. You're going to mark that and that's going to be marked point P. Now from point P we're going to do a quarter inch to each side and then we're going to make a line from B to P and we're going to use that as a guide and you're going to go down three and a half inches from point P. And then you're going to take those marks from your quarter inch on either side of P and you're going to match it to that bottom point to make a triangle for your dart. This is going to be point Q where your darts meet. Next we're going to do our bodice back arm side. So from K to Q we're going to find the center of that measurement. Next, we're going to draw a line using measurement 13 at a right angle from line AB using that measurement number 13. So using measurement number 13, we've made this line RS. And using your curved ruler, you're going to match it to O, S, and M to create your arm side curve. We're gonna mark two notches in our arm side. So we're gonna use, you have to use a measuring tape that's flexible and we're gonna measure two and a quarter inches from point M. And then from the first notch, we're gonna measure up a half inch for the second notch. And that's just gonna help us to match our patterns. So that is your basic pattern for the back bodice. Next, we're going to move on to doing our front bodice draft. So, what you're going to do, your first measurement is going to be, we're going to use code measurement 7. And from point G, using measurement 7, you're going to mark point T. Next, we're going to use measurement number 4. From T, we're going to measure down using measurement number four. And that is gonna be lower, again, the extended line DC below line BC. And that's where you'll make sure that it's long enough that it matches measurement number four from point T. You're gonna mark that point down there as point U. Using measurement number eight, we're gonna go down from point T and mark that. That's gonna be point V. So this is our bust level. We're just going to make a light marking so that we can see that from line EF to line CD. Just a light marking so that we can see that bust level. Next, using measurement number 22, your bodice front bust point to center front, we're going to draw at a right angle from point V. And we're going to make that line darker and we're going to mark that as our bust point. Next, we're going to do the waist start placement here in the front with our new measurement. What we're going to do is we're going to extend our line from point U, and we're just going to draw a right angle to a straight line across for that waistline that's just going to meet from U to F. So connecting line EF to that point U at a right angle. Now we're going to measure from point U using our waist start placement, and that mark is going to be W. And one and a half inches from W, we're going to have point X. Now your dart is not going to go all the way up to your bust point. So what you're going to do is measure one and a quarter inches down from your bust point. Mark that, and that's going to be point Y. You're going to measure halfway between point X and point W and draw a dotted line from that point up to point Y. So now you're going to go from X to Y and W to Y. And that's your front waist dart 
placement. So the next step is to mark your side seam for your front bodice. To do that, you're going to locate point M, which is the bottom of your arm's eye on the back bodice. You're going to measure down two and one quarter inches, and that is going to be point Z. Next, you're going to measure your front bodice waist from center front to side seam, which is measurement 23 on your sheet. And you have to exclude your dart measurement. So the dart is one and a half inches, which means you have to mark it an extra one and a half inches from center front. So my measurement is eight inches, which means I have to do nine and a half inches from center front. And mark that, we're gonna label that as lowercase a. Now you're going to draw a straight line from Z to lowercase a. Now we're going to do the bust dart. Now this is going to be adding lines NZ and Z lowercase a and then subtracting measurement number three. So you have to do a little bit of measuring and adding and subtracting here. So we're gonna take measurement NZ, which should be two and a quarter inches for everyone. And then you're going to measure from point Z to lowercase a and add those together and then you're going to subtract measurement number three and that is going to be how wide your bust dart needs to be so mine needs to be an inch and three quarters so what we're going to do is we're going to measure down from point z and you're going to measure down however many so i'm measuring down one and three quarters we're going to mark that as lowercase b then you're going to find the halfway point between Z and B and mark that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to where we marked our bust point. We're going to measure one and a quarter inches over to the left and mark that as point lowercase c. Now to complete your dart, you are going to draw a line from Z to C and from lowercase b to lowercase c. And that will be your bust dart point. To mark the bodice front waist, we're going to use our curved ruler and do a slight curve from point A, lowercase a, to point X, and a slight curve from point W to point U. However, we need to make sure that we are maintaining a right angle at point U. To do the bodice front neckline, we are going to line up our bodice depth and width measurements. And remember, we're going to take new ones. So if you haven't done that, which you should have for the back, remember to go back and watch that new video. We're going to draw the curve from the center front neck point up to the shoulder. So remember that your center front neck point is point T. So your shoulder point is going to be right here along line DE. So we're going to take that and we're going to do our curve. You're going to go in your depth. Make sure to measure that from D. So then you're going to do your curve from T to D remembering to keep a right angle at T. We're going to mark that shoulder point, that shoulder neck point, as lowercase d. Next, we're going to do our bodice shoulder seam. So what we're going to do is we're going to place a, di a ruler diagonally from point U towards point E to figure out our slope, and then another one diagonally from D to the yardstick, remember they have to meet. So find your bodice front shoulder slope, which is going to be number five, plus you want your bodice shoulder seam, and then you just have to angle from point U until they meet, mark that, and then we're going to draw a line from that intersection to D, and that point is going to be lowercase d. Now we're going to do the bod bodice arm's eye from the front. So we're going to find the center point between T and G. And then from that center point, we're going to draw a line. We're going to mark that as lowercase f. Now you're going to use measurement number 19. And you're going to go for an f and draw a line. And that's going to be lowercase g. And again, we're using measurement number 19 to find that, your bodice front chest width, center front to arm's eye. So now we're gonna use our curved ruler to draw the arm's eye curve from M up to E. Remember to keep a right angle where the seat is. So from M hitting G, meeting up to E. We're gonna mark one notch on our arm's eye up 
two and a half inches from point M, and then you're going to mark another notch on your shoulder, and that is your basic bodice sloper, front and back. Uh, next, all we have to worry about is the sleeve. Next, we're going to do our sleeve draft. The sleeve draft is going to be just a little bit easier. First, we're going to do the basic sleeve outline. So we're going to draw a vertical line, which we're going to use code number one for. Remember to leave a little bit of space at the top and bottom of your paper, and give yourself a good amount of space on either side as well. Now, just because of length, I'm actually gonna draw this line horizontally so that I have the space. It is going to be as long as your arm. First, we're gonna label, we're gonna label that line as A, B. Now measuring down from point A, you're going to use measurement number four, and you're going to mark a point using that measurement. And now, using that point you just marked, which is your cap point, you're going to draw line C, D, using measurement number five. And remember to use the center of whatever, so my measurement is 10 and a quarter, which means that I'm going to need to do five and an eight at the center, and then draw that line at a right angle to AB, and that's going to be line C, D. Next, we're going to connect A to D and A to C to make a triangle. Next, we're going to go down to line B, and we're going to draw line EF, which is going to be four and three quarters from B on each side. And that's going to be line EF. I'm going to draw that horizontal so it intersects at a right angle with line with point B. Next, we're going to connect C to E, and it will go at an angle, and D to F. Again, there will be a slight angle to these lines. Next, we're going to find our elbow line. So, to find point G, it will be halfway between the cap line and EF. So halfway between CD and EF is going to be point G. Now you're going to measure up three quarters of an inch from G and mark that as point H. Using point H, you're going to create the elbow line, which will run horizontal to line CD, and we'll go through point H, connecting EF to CD. Now to create the curve for your sleeve, you're going to make four mark on your triangle line. So from line CA, divide it into four equal parts. Make sure you do that on both sides and label these J, K, L, M, N, O. Now we're going to make marks based off our triangle line and the points we just made. Three eighths of an inch below point J, three sixteenths above point K, five eighths of an inch above line L, three quarters of an inch at M, three sixteenths of an inch above line N, and a half inch below line O. So now we're going to mark those with a curve. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your curved ruler and you're going to match the line, you're going to point C to that line above J and only go that far at this point. Then you're going to go from J to that line above K. Now it's going to bolt out, so you're going to go curve in and now you're going to start curving out from K to L and from L to point A. You need to keep a right angle at A. And again, you're going to do that around from A to M, from M to N, and then going in from N to O, and O to D. The final thing we have to do is to mark your elbow dart. To make our elbow dart, we're first going to mark point P, which will be a quarter of an inch below line HI, and a quarter of an inch out from line CE, and that will be point P. Next, we're going to measure one inch below point P and mark that as Q. Now halfway between those two points, which should be half an inch, is going to be point R. Now we're going to take our ruler and match it up with R and pivot it until it meets up with line HI and draw a dotted line. It has to meet up at four inches on line HI. And then we're gonna draw our solid lines from point P up to that four inch mark and point Q up to that four inch mark. And then make sure that you match line point C to point P to get that new angle 
hole in your sleeve and point Q to point E. Because of that dart, the bottom of our sleeve will have to be adjusted just a little bit. Now measure across line EF three quarters of an inch from E and mark that as point U. You're now going to take your ruler from point Q, angle it so that it crosses point U, and mark the number of inches that is from P to E before the dart insertion. We're now gonna draw a line from Q to your new point, which is W, crossing over U. You're gonna use your curved ruler to make a point from W to B so that those match up and the bottom of your sleeve curves just a little. Next, we're gonna go to point F and we're gonna extend line F out an extra three eighths of an inch, and then we're going to mark from point from line HI, take that down to F to extend that just a little, and we're gonna continue that curve from point B so it goes up a little bit and over to F. So your sleeve should curve just a little bit, and that is your sleeve drafted pattern. So now you've drafted your first pattern. What you need to do now is get some tracing paper and trace out the final lines of those bodice patterns. Remember, don't keep the front and back bodice part connected like they are now. Separate those with a couple of inches because you'll need to add a seam allowance everywhere that there will be a seam. So that includes your side seam, your shoulder seam. Don't put anything on the front, but down at the bottom for your hem and through the sleeve to connect a sleeve to it. You need to make sure you have a half inch to five eighths of an inch extra because right now the measurements make it form fitted. If you were to sew them together, they wouldn't fit anymore. So you have to add that extra onto your pattern before you cut anything out. So next week, we're going to start talking about pattern manipulations so that you can see how to create different types of tops using your bodice sloper. So if you have suggestions on the kind of top that you want to make, leave them in the comments below so that I can kind of decide and I can hopefully figure out a pattern and let you know how much fabric we're going to need so that we can get going on that project in a couple of weeks. Hopefully this was helpful. I know that it's kind of hard to see because I'm down on the floor and I just have the camera on a tripod, but if you have any questions, put them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. I'll put the step-by-step -step instructions in uh, the Google Docs so that you can access those. So don't forget to check the links below for the Google Docs to make sure that you have your step-by-step -step instructions and I will see you next week.